Hello, church. Calvary greetings. It's always a pleasure uh, to meet with you. And I pray that every time that we meet, may God do a new thing in your life in Jesus' name. So please gather your family together. Pick up your tambourine, your drum, whatever it is you have as instrument of praise. Be sure you have it with you. Be sure you have your Bible uh, with you. I know that God is going to do something mighty in your life today in Jesus' name. And wherever you are, the long arm of the Lord will reach you, will touch you, and will bless you in Jesus' name. Please uh, remember to take photographs of yourself, uh, of your family during this service, and send it to us via WhatsApp. I am appealing to you to surrender yourself to be used by Jesus. Those photographs may not mean much to you, but they are going to go a long way to strengthen the faith of somebody somewhere. And as you obey, may you receive the blessings of obedience in Jesus' name. Please avoid any distractions. Uh, listen attentively and be active throughout the service. Write down every Bible passage that is mentioned. Write it down. Write down every point that is made. And most importantly, listen for your word. When you hear your own word, you will know that this word is specifically for you. When you hear it, you say a loud amen. You turn it into prayers. And I'm believing God for you. That every prayer you pray today will become a mighty testimony in Jesus' name. So please lift up your Bibles as we take the affirmation together. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, eternal seed of the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same again. Never, never, never. I will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, uh, I believe the Lord wants to speak to us uh, on the sermon we started a few weeks back. The Lord is my shepherd. And within that theme, the specific focus for today is he maketh me to lie down. He maketh me to lie down. I pray that God Almighty himself will speak to you in Jesus' name. Let's just take this song. If you can find a place to lie down, if you can find a place to kneel down reverently, let's just take this song together. It says, Jesus, you are all I have. All I have is you, Jesus. Just go ahead and worship the Lord with that song. Because you want your money. Lion, he won the money. He won the money. Lion, he won the money. Jesus, he won the money.
You are all, Father, all that I have. Amen. You are all that I need. You are my Jehovah, hell should die. Lord, even as we go into your word this morning, give us a heart of understanding. Plant your word in our hearts, O oh God, and do what you alone can do. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. God bless you. The Lord is my shepherd, part four. And the topic under that theme for today, he maketh me to lie down. Psalm 23, verse 2. Psalm 23, verse 2 says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. <laughs> As I continue to study that passage, the Lord is my shepherd. The Holy Spirit laid it in my heart that when you say the Lord is my shepherd, you are saying the Lord is able to give me rest. That's point number one. He is able to give me rest. That's what it means when you say the Lord is my shepherd. Because the shepherd gives rest to the sheep. In Psalm 23 verse 2 that we read before, it says, It maketh me to lie down. In other words, I was up before, struggling before, but my shepherd discovered that I need some rest. And it made me to rest. I prophesy upon your life, May God Almighty give you rest in Jesus' name. I say, may God Almighty give you rest in Jesus' name. You see, when you say the Lord is my shepherd, you are saying he has the power. He has the power to move you from a place of struggle to a position of rest. I don't know who it is out there that you are struggling in one way or the other in your life. But the shepherd of your soul who has the power to give you rest. At this very minute, receive the rest of the Lord in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. 
Matthew eleven twenty eight. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor. In other words, you have been busy struggling. You have been laboring, laboring, and the Lord is saying it's time for you to relax and rest. I don't know who you are out there, but just in case you are the one that Jesus is talking to, he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor. I prophesy upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Your labor has come to an end in Jesus' name. May God replace your labor with rest and relaxation in Jesus' name. He said, come unto me, all those that are heavy laden. In other words, there is so much burden you are carrying. Again, I don't know who it is God is speaking to. But I know that this word is for you. He says you are heavy laden. What you are going through is too heavy for you. You can't carry it alone. I pray for you from the bottom of my heart. That that burden that is so much for you, maybe it's a financial burden, whatever burden it is, or it's emotional burden, Jesus is saying it's too big for you, it's too heavy for you. May God take away that burden in the mighty name of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9. This is what the Lord is saying to you. He said, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. In other words, <laughs> I have reserved rest for you. Come into that rest. I pray for you one more time. The rest that God has prepared for you. The grace to enter into it. Receive in the mighty name of Jesus. There remaineth rest for the people of God. You know, the Bible says it's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it. It's God that showeth mercy. May the mercy of God that giveth rest, may it be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, when you say the Lord is my shepherd, you are saying he is able to place me in divine supply. He's able to place me in divine supply. Because he's the shepherd of my soul. He has the power to supply my need abundantly. And not only to supply, to just put me inside the place of abundance. I pray for you. The kind of abundance you have never experienced in your life. The kind of abundance you cannot even imagine. May God grant unto you in Jesus' name. When you look at the flyer of today's sermon, you will see the picture of a sheep that the shepherd decided to place in abundance. You look at the, 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 the flyer. You will see the shepherd of that sheep decided to place that sheep inside abundance. I declare upon your life one more time. May God place you in divine supply in Jesus' name. I say may God place you in divine supply in Jesus' name. When you look at that flyer, I'm sure the technical department will put it on the screen. When you look at it, the shepherd of that sheep was saying, I'm going to put you in a place where you will sit down and you will eat all you want. I will give you a blessing that is buffet. All you can eat. I declare over your life. May God give you a buffet blessing in Jesus' name. I say it one more time. May God give you a buffet blessing in Jesus' name. It reminds me of Joel chapter 2 verse 25. Joel chapter 2 verse 25. 
He says, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. In other words, you labored in the past and you did not see the benefit of that labor. God is saying to you this morning, I am restoring to you everything that has been taken from you. Everything that you have lost. I decree upon your life. Every blessing that you have lost. Every blessing that the locust has eaten. I restore in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, so I will restore to you the things that the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm that they have all taken from you. It's possible you have some caterpillar in your family. Or maybe you have some caterpillar among your friends. Or you have some caterpillar even in the house of God that are working against your joy. Or maybe you have some caterpillar or some papa worm even in the spiritual realm that are not allowing your labor to produce harvest. But in the name of the king of kings, in the name of the Lord of Lords, the one that said in his word, I will restore everything that every caterpillar, every palmer worm, canker worm, and the locust has taken away from you. Receive back in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 26 of that passage. It says, and you will eat in plenty. If that is you, Please lift up your hand wherever you are. May God Almighty give you the grace to eat in plenty. I say this one more time. May God give you the grace to eat in plenty. Say so you will eat in plenty and you will be satisfied. You know, sometimes you wish your life can be better than the way it is. But today is that day when your wish is being granted by the Lord. I said today is that day when your desire is being granted by the Lord. Whatever it is that you are desiring so that your joy can be full, may God grant unto you in Jesus' name. He said when I finish with you, not only will you be satisfied, you will praise my name. You will sing a song unto me. I join my faith with yours. Before today is over, you will sing a song of praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You know, God has a way of talking to us. The song that we used to start this sermon was given to me as I stepped into the premises of the church to take this sermon. I just found myself singing. Found myself singing. Ah! Where did this song come from? He must be from the Lord. This is not a song that I had sung in many years. I don't even remember, but I just found myself singing that song. It just came from inside. Ah, and I said, Lord, this must be the song you want to use for the sermon. I pray for someone this day. May God put in you a song of praise. I say it one more time. May God put in you a song of praise. You will just find yourself praising God. You will just find yourself declaring the blessings of God. I prophesy one more time. Even before you know it, you will find yourself shouting a loud hallelujah. You will find yourself saying, all that I have is Jesus. You begin to declare the blessings and the power of God in Jesus' name. The passage concluded, as you look at it on the screen, so you begin to declare, see how God has dealt with me wondrously. And that his people will never be put to shame. I receive that for you. That no matter the plans of the enemy, <laughs> no matter what they have done, what they are doing, what they are planning to do, you will never be put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus. You will never lack in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three. When you say the Lord is my shepherd, you are saying he is able to steal the storm in my life. He is able to calm the storms in my life. 
You know that passage we started with, Psalm 23, verse 2. It says, He leadeth me beside the still waters. There are waters and there are waters. There are some water you will see. I see waves. You will run away. But this one said, the Lord decided, me, decided to put me near a still water. In other words, concerning you, no more storm. I prophesy upon your life. Concerning you, no more storm. Amen. I say it one more time, no more storm. Amen. As I was preparing this sermon, I think the Holy Spirit whispered to me that storm is also a form of captivity form of captivity when the enemy has captured the person there is nothing you do that will, su that will succeed in fact you will get to the point where you wonder is there any point continuing to live if life is like this that is a storm if you are that person you are in one form of captivity or another may the shepherd of your soul lead you beside the still waters in Jesus name and then in particular, God singled out spiritual torment. He laid it to myself, spiritual torment. Now, I don't know who that is, but you know yourself. The Lord says you are going through a spiritual torment. If that is you, if you can, just stand wherever you are. Almighty Father, you are the one that spoke to me. That there is someone, somewhere going through spiritual torment. I join my faith with yours wherever you are. That from today, no more torment in Jesus' name. Amen. The almighty God, I saw you and is leading me to pray for you. Whatever spiritual captivity you have been experiencing has expired today in Jesus' name. Number four. So I begin to, to round up. <laughs> when you say the Lord is my shepherd, you are saying he is able to lead me to a safe place. You are saying the Lord is able to lead me to a safe place. Because when you see the flyer of this someone once again, you will see where the shepherd placed the sheep in a safe place where no one can trouble that sheep. I pray for you. May God Almighty, the shepherd of your soul, place you in a safe place in Jesus' name. Amen. Ezekiel 34 verse 14. Ezekiel 34, verse 14. It says, I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel. Think about that. I'm going to give you sufficient provision. But I will not just give you anywhere. I will take you to the place on the mountain where no one will be able to trouble you. <laughs> ah, Father, I thank you for your word. I pray for you today. May God Almighty take you to the mountain where nobody will be able to trouble you in the mighty name of Jesus. I say this one more time. May God take you to a place <laughs> Where none of your enemies will be able to reach you in Jesus' name. Amen. God can feed the sheep anywhere. But I said this particular case, this particular sheep, I am taking it to the mountain to eat and be satisfied. And nobody will be able to disturb it. I pray for you one more time. May God himself take you to a place where nobody will be able to disturb you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever you are right now that you are experiencing, experiencing trouble, in your business, I prophesy upon your life. All those who don't want you to advance, 
all those who don't want you to move forward. May God Almighty lift you above them in Jesus' name. In your family, everyone that is troubling your soul, may God Almighty lift you above them in Jesus' name. When he says, I will take this sheep to the mountain top, it means I am tired of allowing this sheep to be troubled. I pray for you one more time. Even among those who you think they are your friends, but they are the one going behind to trouble your destiny. May God lift you above them in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 40 verse 2. Psalm 40 verse 2. He said, he brought me out of the horrible pit. Out of the mary clay. And he set my feet upon a rock. And he established my goings. Please lift up your hand wherever you are. Every one of you that happens to be in an audible pit right now. Maybe it's a physical pit. Maybe it's a spiritual pit. Maybe it's a financial pit. Maybe it's an emotional pit. Whatever pit that you are in, may God, the shepherd of your soul, bring you out right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Just in case you might be in a miry clay. A miry clay represents you are trying to come out. They are pulling you back in. You try to come out. They are pulling you back in. You try to pull your leg out. It's dragging you back in. You are trying to move forward. You find yourself going backwards. I pray for you from the bottom of my heart. May the shepherd of your soul pull you out of the miry clay. And then he said, he will set your feet upon a rock. Just like he did for that sheep. He said, I'm going to place you where no human being will be able to trouble you. I prophesy upon your life. May God take you to a place, a position that no one will be able to trouble you in the mighty name of Jesus. And finally on this passage, he said, he established my goings. This is how the Holy Spirit explained it to me. He said, this particular person has been troubled too much. Now, let this person begin to enjoy life in my front. And let me see who is going to trouble this person. That's what it means when it says he established your goings. He says, here you are. Do whatever you want. Enjoy the blessings of your, of your God. And no man can trouble you. I prophesy upon your life that God will establish your goings. I said God will establish your goings. God will establish your goings. No one will be able to trouble you in Jesus' name. You know, there is a Nigerian way where we say the same thing. It is called no shaking. No shaking. That passage, that last part of it, he established my goings, means no shaking. I prophesy upon your life. From today, no shaking in Jesus' name. I say from today, no shaking in Jesus' name. Psalm 40 verse 3. Psalm 40 verse 3. And then it, 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 the, the shepherd of his soul continued. So he, he, he put a new song in my mouth. So after he placed the person upon the rock. And then just as he did, remember I told you before this, this sermon, as I entered the premises to come and do this sermon, I began to sing. A song I never prepared, a song I didn't know, I just found myself singing. I just found myself singing in the car. I just found myself singing. I prophesy upon your life. The almighty God will put a song in your mouth. I say one more time, the almighty God will put a song in your mouth. No matter what you are going through, the shepherd of your soul will put a song in your mouth. He said, many shall see it. What that means is that you may not even need to come and testify. Because the blessing will testify of itself. That's what the Bible passage says. He said, many shall see it. I pray for you this morning. From the bottom of my heart. The blessing that you cannot hide. 
the blessing that will testify of itself. May God Almighty release unto you in Jesus' name. He says the blessing will make them to fear. Say they shall fear. There are blessings and there are blessings. When you see the wonders of God upon the life of a man, when you see the wonders of God upon the life of a woman, and you happen to know that person before the wonder, then you will fear the God of that person. What the Lord is saying to you this morning is that by the time I finish with you, people will see my blessing upon your life and they will begin to fear. That shall be your portion in Jesus' name. And then they will come and ask you, take me to this God. Say so they will trust in the Lord. The blessing that will magnify God. The blessing that will win souls for the Lord. The blessing that will draw people to God. May God grant unto you in Jesus' name. You are going to rise on your feet as we pray. I will read out the prayer points. Number one, say, Lord Jesus, thank you for being the shepherd of my soul. Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sheep in full surrender. I come to you as a sheep in full surrender. Prayer point number two. Father, please give me rest from struggle. Number three. Place me in divine abundance. Prayer point number four. Bring an end to fear. Bring an end to affliction. Bring an end to torment in my life. And number five, Father, set my feet upon a rock higher than my enemies. Set my feet upon a rock higher than my enemies. Number six, the shepherd of my soul, stay with me. Don't leave me alone. And then the last prayer point is your own request. You are going to cry to God from the bottom of your heart. And just speak to him what you need in your life now for your joy to be full. We are going to pray with the song, My trust is in you. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. My trust is in you. <laughs> My trust is in you, Lord. You are able to give me rest. You are able to place me in, in divine supply. My trust is in you, Lord. My trust is in you, Lord. My trust is in you, Lord. My trust is in you. I offer myself unto you in full surrender. My trust is in I offer myself to you as a sheep. I offer myself as a sheep to you in full surrender. In full surrender. Give me rest, oh God. Give me rest from struggle. Give me rest from struggle. Give me rest from struggle. Oh, Give me rest from trouble, Lord. Give me rest from struggle. Position me, Lord. Position me. Position me in divine supply. Position me in divine supply. Position me in divine supply. You are my El Shaddai. You are my El Shaddai. Position me, position me in divine supply. Bring an end, Father. My trust is. Bring an end to fear. Bring an end to affliction. My trust. Bring an end to torment in my life. Bring an end. Bring an end. Bring an end to torment. 
Bring an end to torment. Bring an end to torment. Rema so kerebo, maso to kerebo shere, maso kerebo. Bring an end. Bring an end to fear. Bring an end to affliction. Bring an end to torment. Set my feet. Set my feet upon the road. Far, far, far. Above my enemies. Set my feet upon the rock. Set my feet upon the rock. Above my enemies. Above my enemies. And Father, please stay with me. The shepherd of my soul. The shepherd of my soul. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone. The shepherd of my soul. The shepherd of my soul. Don't leave me alone. Father, don't leave me alone. You are the shepherd of my soul. You are the strength of my life. You are all that I need. You are all that I have. You are able to give me rest. You are able to place me in abundant supply. You are able to steal the storms in my life. You are able to lead me to a safe place. Father, don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone. My trust is in you. Set my feet upon the rock. Set my feet upon the rock. Set my feet upon the rock. Far, far, far above the enemies of my soul. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I declare upon your life. From today, may you surrender fully to the shepherd of your soul. May you stop struggling to do it on your own. May you surrender as the sheep of the lover of your soul. I declare for you, I declare upon your life, may the shepherd of your soul give you rest from struggle. I prophesy, May the shepherd of your soul place you in divine supply. A place where you will never suffer lack again in your life. I pray for you from the bottom of my heart. That the shepherd of your soul will bring an end to failure. It will bring an end to fear. It will bring an end to torment. It will bring an end to affliction. That the shepherd of your soul will set your feet upon a rock far above the enemies of your soul and that the shepherd of your soul does as he did to that sheep we saw in the flyer he said sheep i will take you to a place where you will rest you will lie down you will enjoy life and i will stay with you so that nobody can trouble you i declare upon your life may god almighty place you where nobody will be able to trouble your soul. May God Almighty himself stay with you for the rest of your life. And every prayer you have prayed today, I join my faith with yours. May God turn it into a mighty testimony. And so shall it be. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. If you have listened to this sermon, and the Lord is saying, you are the reason for this sermon. That you need to surrender your life to Jesus. If you have not given your life to Jesus, the lover of your soul, you will still be struggling when there is no need for you to struggle. So you are saying, Pastor, <laughs> I need to surrender my life to Jesus. I need to lie down and rest from struggle. Please say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you. I need to be born again. I want to surrender my life to you. Accept me, Lord, into your kingdom. 
Be the Lord over my soul. Be my shepherd. Make me to lie down from struggle. Give me rest. Give me divine supply. Lift me above my enemies. Take me to a safe place. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. As you have prayed, so shall it be unto you in Jesus' name. If you said that prayer of submission, please send your name and your telephone number to us on the email that is on the screen and to the number that is also on the screen. I can guarantee you somebody will get in touch with you within the next 24 hours and will be praying along with you. I welcome you to the family of Jesus. It is well with you in Jesus' name.